The syn dihydroxylation of an alkene adds two hydroxyl groups across the alkene pi bond in a syn fashion. There are two commonly employed oxidants for this transformation, osmium tetroxide and potassium permanganate. When osmium tetroxide is used as the oxidant, the reaction begins with the attack of the alkene pi bond on one of the oxygen atoms of osmium tetroxide. As a result, an osmium oxygen pi bond is pushed onto osmium. And finally, another osmium oxygen pi bond attacks the carbon of the alkene that would otherwise have lost a bond. The intermediate that results from these first three mechanistic arrows is known as a cyclic osmate ester. Since all of the bond making and breaking in this step happened at the same time, the addition is concerted and therefore has a syn geometry. In other words, both the oxygens of the cyclic osmate ester added to the same side of the alkene substrate. Finally, the cyclic osmate ester is cleaved in one of a number of ways. A very common approach is to use a stoichiometric cooxidant, such as NMO. NMO stands for N-methylmorpholine N-oxide, and its structure is shown here. NMO reoxidizes the osmium, allowing it to act on another molecule of alkene substrate. This is particularly convenient because it allows small catalytic amounts of osmium tetroxide to be used. And that's helpful because osmium tetroxide is expensive and toxic. The final product of the reaction is the vicinal diol in which the two hydroxyl groups have been added to the same side of the alkene substrate. There are, however, other methods available for the cleavage of the cyclic osmate ester. Instead of using NMO, it is also possible to use peroxides as alternative co-oxidants. Or stoichiometric osmium tetroxide can be used, and the cyclic osmate ester can then be treated with sodium sulfite, sodium bisulfite, or hydrogen sulfide to cleave it. When potassium permanganate is used as the oxidant, the reaction begins in a way that is mechanistically very, very similar to the reaction with osmium tetroxide. The alkene pi bond attacks one of the oxygen atoms of the permanganate. A manganese oxygen pi bond is pushed onto manganese to reduce it, and a second manganese oxygen pi bond is used to attack the carbon of the alkene that would otherwise have lost a bond. This results in the formation of a cyclic manganate ester, and that intermediate can be cleaved upon exposure to aqueous base. It's important to note that this reaction is typically conducted at low temperatures because at higher temperatures the central carbon-carbon bond may be cleaved as the substrate is further oxidized. In this specific example, a symmetrical alkene reactant is used. However, even when the alkene is unsymmetrical, Regiochemistry is not an issue in syn dihydroxylation because the same group is added to each alkene carbon. The reaction begins with the attack of the alkene pi bond on one of the oxygen atoms of osmium tetroxide. An osmium oxygen pi bond is pushed onto osmium to reduce it. And a second osmium oxygen pi bond is used to attack the carbon of the alkene that would otherwise have lost a bond. The cyclic osmate ester is then cleaved by NMO 
as the osmium is reoxidized to allow it to act upon another molecule of alkene substrate. The product is the vicinal diol shown here. It's important to note that no stereocenters are formed in this particular reaction. So wedges and dashes need not necessarily be used in drawing the product. In other words, this representation of the product is the same as this representation of the product. Since two carbons of the reactant are involved in this transformation, it is possible that zero, one, or even two stereocenters may be formed during the course of the reaction. Let's first consider an example in which a single stereocenter is formed during the reaction. In this instance, the alkene substrate is treated with potassium permanganate, and the addition of permanganate can occur from either side of the alkene to give two enantiomeric cyclic manganate esters. However, only one of the carbons of the cyclic manganate ester is actually a stereocenter, and that is the one right here. To emphasize this point, the other carbon of the cyclic manganate ester is not drawn using wedges and dashes. When these two cyclic manganate esters are cleaved in aqueous base, the reaction takes place at the manganese center, and therefore, there's no change in the stereochemistry that has already been established. The result is two enantiomeric vicinal diol products. Now let's turn our attention to an example in which two stereocenters are formed during the reaction. In this instance, the alkene substrate is treated with osmium tetroxide. As the addition of osmium tetroxide across the pi bond takes place, we must keep in mind that this is a concerted addition and therefore a syn addition. So both new bonds between carbon and oxygen are formed on the same side of the molecule. This results in enantiomeric cyclic osmate esters and when NMO cleaves them, we obtain two vicinal diol products. These products are enantiomers and more specifically they are the syn enantiomers because the hydroxyl groups have been added on the same side of the molecule. Notice that although two stereocenters have been formed, only two of four possible stereoisomeric products were actually created due to the mechanism. It is always important to be on the lookout for internal symmetry, but it's especially important to do so in reactions where the same group is added to each carbon of a pi bond. In this instance, the alkene substrate is treated with osmium tetraoxide, and the cyclic osmate ester that forms has an internal plane of symmetry. It is therefore a meso compound and has no enantiomer. Furthermore, when NMO cleaves this cyclic osmate ester, the syn vicinal diol is also a meso compound because of its internal plane of symmetry, and therefore it has no enantiomer. So in this instance, there is only a single reaction product. In summary, the syn dihydroxylation of an alkene is accomplished by treatment with osmium tetraoxide or potassium permanganate. The cyclic intermediates formed in each case are cleaved in different ways. But in both cases, the hydroxyl groups in the vicinal diol product are syn to one another. There are no carbocation intermediates in these reactions, and so no rearrangement is observed. 
The preceding has been an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, a color-coded approach to arrow pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, and in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.